Uh, welcome back to uh, one of our bullet points. And, and to me, uh, this is really one of the uh, really important ones. And it, it's something that's slipped up on the industry. Uh, it's not just an Angus and Charlet. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, a problem for all the breeds. And that is a feet issue. I don't know of very many breeders that have really paid as much attention to feet and leg structure as we should have. Uh, and my reasons for this are, are, are three. One, you can get animals that are unsound on their feet because they just flat been fed too hard. Uh, as all of you know, that would be founder. This is from a high grain, high gain ration in the bulls. Uh, just their feet grow out and they never will be sound and, and, and uh, sure can't travel. So that's one thing. And the second uh, reason or problem that we've got is because of genetics. Uh, through the years, there's been genetics that have been used uh, that the feet weren't good. Uh, they crossed over a crab claw is what I call it. Uh, there's also animals that are too low in their pasterns. When they come down step, then the feet tend to grow out because there's nothing to wear those feet off. An animal needs to step correctly every time they walk to keep the toenails and their hooves wore down like they need be uh, to keep them sound. So overfeeding, genetics, and then I, a problem that I struggle with is we add more and more performance uh, to, to cattle uh, today and have in the last 20 years. And, and I'm a total believer we need to keep increasing the profitability of our operations. But the problem I have or the question I have is as we have increased pounds and pounds and pounds, this, this animal body is still sitting on this same size foot. And in many cases, the foot has actually gotten smaller because with the increase for, for more pounds and more gain and everything, we've also, in many breeds, push for lighter birth weight and lighter birth weight. Well, both things are good, but I have a real concern at what point that an animal can stand on a smaller foot, smaller bone, and we keep adding that 100 or 500 or 1,000 pounds of weight on top of that same foot. Because what will happen at some point in time, unless that foot is absolutely perfect, when it hits the ground, the animal stands, then we're going to start seeing this. The animal is going to start buckling out on their feet. They're going to start being splay footed like this. They're going to be towing in. And, and then that's when these toes get to growing and, and some things like that. So this is a real question I have in our industry. At what point can we continue to push performance and still keep feet sound? I don't know very many cows that get bred out in the pasture if the bull's laying underneath a tree or by the pond because he can't get up and move because his feet are all messed up. And another real problem I have with genetics from that standpoint in chasing, uh, and I'll call it spread bulls, and, and again, I, uh, we've been guilty as, as, as a lot of other folks and try and chase uh, some of those things, but we probably haven't chased as much because of this foot concern. But another concern that you should have as producers is that through the genetics, if you have a bull that's bad footed, he is going to pass those genes on, if it's genetic, to his daughters. And then within time, when your cows get to be four, five, six, seven years old, or maybe sooner, and not all of them, but there's going to be a portion that carries his genetic problem, and then those cows are going to go bad on you. So we really have, at Pink Beef Genetics, we have a lot of concern on the foot size, the foot issue. You get a great big foot, then you get big bone, then you get calving trouble. So there's no easy way out. I don't have the answer, but that's some of the things we try to balance here. Uh, we're not necessarily all, all the time absolutely ch chasing the lowest birth weight bull of a breed in the highest yearling weight. Because we think somewhere, if and it's, we think it's already happened, quite honestly, we think that's gonna be problems for you commercial producers down the road. We want all we can get pound-wise to sell, but we've also gotta use, a, put a lot of thought into it and not add 10 pounds of yearling weight and take genetics for a bad foot with it. That is totally unprofitable and, and will continue to be. Again, uh, the legs, uh, the structure on the animal, once we leave the foot, uh, everyone knows if you're too straight in the shoulder, you get an animal that walks like this. If you're too straight behind, it's the same thing behind. Well, you don't get very many cows bred again by a bull that every time he gets up, he's stiff and sore. That bull will not get the number of cows bred that he needs to. He will not get them bred in the first 
21 days as he needs to or as many. And again, genetically, those problems are going to pass on from generation to generation if it's genetic. So that's, uh, that's a problem of straightness of joints. Uh, they also, the other problem I mentioned was the weakness of the pasterns. If the animals t tend to sit down their feet and uh, we'll say skid out, then the toes on the back feet and the front feet, when they sit down that low, close to the dew claws, the back, then those toes will tend to grow out because that pressure is not on that foot every time it comes down to keep that hoof worn like it needs to stay worn. So there's a lot to do uh, in the whole process of the beef industry, and that's what some of these bullet points are about that we're talking about on our video to let our customers know and potential customers know that we do watch the little things that make a lot of difference in your uh, bottom line. If an animal doesn't move good, and I'll go back to the, the athlete portion the, uh, in the video that uh, an athlete moves good. They move like, I like to say, a cat. You watch a big cat and they just stride out and their, their feet match where they walk every time and then cover a lot of ground quick. And that's what you need in, in your uh, beef cattle. Uh, soundness is, is a, a, one of the really big problems along with fertility. And these traits are not measured by any P EPDs basically at this point, uh, or very little. So these are things uh, as producers, commercial cattlemen that you need to watch for when you go to buy uh, bulls. Uh, crippled genetics do breed on, unless it's from founder, which is too, uh, too much gain. And, and then again, somewhere along the line, the foot size and mature weights all will come into a balance and we will continue to see foot problems I'm predicting in the future, simply because we've had so much weight uh, to finish steers and, and then that comes back to the cows and the bulls uh, that we may have some problems down the road. But at Fink Beef Genetics, we try to watch feet extremely close. We learned this many years ago. We will not use a bull that we know has foot problems or passes anything on. We stay completely away from those genetics and try to keep our cattle very, very sound for you, our customers. Uh, for more information on the, on the Fink Beef Genetics program, please uh, feel free to keep visiting our website and read about some of our history and the current things we are doing.